Hello everyone, my name is Krista and I am the creatress of Wild Crescent Ecological Landscaping and Gardens and I uh, just want to tell you a little bit about myself. I've been dedicated my life to nature and the environment for the last 10 years. Some of that was in wild conservation and most of it has been in organic farming in the Treasure Valley and throughout Oregon. And I also work at Edwards Nursery. And the combination of being at Edwards Nursery and taking calls and being on gardening um, pages in Boise, I've been hearing a lot of reoccurring questions. And so in um, a general enthusiasm to help assist everyone to be in their gardens and also the influx of people going out into their gardens during this time, I thought I would address some of those questions. Um, first, I would like to address is, do I cover my crops or do I not? The last couple of days and throughout maybe a couple times a week in the last two weeks, we've been in the Treasure Valley dropping down to temperatures that are 28 degrees, 29 degrees, 30 degrees. For me, anything below 30, that's when I start to pay attention. 32 to 30, I think that's going to be okay. Anything below 30 to 28, I kind of wonder. And when they're consecutive, that's when I take action. So last week we had one day of 28 degrees and I thought, ah, it'll be okay. And if it's not, I'll figure it out. That's that's how, <laughs> that's how you learn, uh, how I learn. Um, this week we had, last night it was 28 degrees, tonight it's going to be 29 degrees, and I saw throughout the day, throughout the week that the temperatures during the day are not getting very high. We're having cloudy days. It's not getting warm necessarily. The soil isn't getting warm in between the cold uh, nights, and there's more consecutive cold nights. So for me, that's enough information. That's enough information. Um, cold temperatures for me to cover some crops. And what I did, uh, some of the factors that I brought into that was I looked out in my fields. We planted roots in the last last waning moon a couple weeks ago and things are starting to come up so they're tender. And a lot of these crops that we planted are cold crops meaning that they're either very hardy, hardy, or some can be tender. Okay, so um, long story short, as you can see, I covered a couple of beds today and it was because things were sprouting and they're babes and I want to protect the babies and just to be careful just so that I can be at more ease really and um, so that we're on the safe side because the more consecutive days of cold that we have the soil um, gets cooler and there's not warm days in between and so that's how I factored it in and throughout this video and others to come you know I just my disclaimer is a lot of what I'm saying is a um, collection of my experience, my opinion, and my intuition. And what I would say to you is that you are working with your microclimate. I mean, here we have a lot of shade. I mean, it changes in one season what we're working with here. And whether you're uh, in Boise in the, on the bench or in the north end or in southeast, it's you're working with what's specific to you. So what I would recommend is paying attention to the weather, but also get your own outdoor thermometer, get a ground thermometer maybe, and also trust your intuition and uh, go with what your gut says or uh, what brings you most peace. Hot crop plants especially are sensitive to temperatures that are below 42, 45 degrees, let's say to be on the safe side. And even that's kind of uh, pressing it and you know, 42 to 38 degrees. And our average last frost is the third week of May. That's a moving target and you have your own microclimates and the nature of nature is that it's always changing and unpredictable. But as a average over time of observation, we can say that it's in that third week of May. So if you have to tomatoes and pepper uh, starts and eggplant, things like that, squash, they're going to still need to be protected in some, in some kind of environment where they're getting uh, enough light and enough warmth to germinate and then grow. Tomato plants and pepper plants, but especially tomato plants, they want to grow to their pot size. So if you're going to start them small, they're going to need to be repotted um, over the next two months so that they continue to grow a really long root. And that long root, once you transplant it into the field once the last frost is gone that's going to ensure a very mature plant. If you don't have a place to put your tomato starts or pepper starts, eggplant, etc., wait um, until the nurse, you know, until you can transplant them or a couple weeks out of transplanting them um, or, you know, uh, ask someone to grow them for you that they have resources for a greenhouse um, to just ensure the best success with these crops.
I get a lot of questions about starting squash, cucumbers, uh, cucumbrets indoors. Um, I want to speak to that because these plants, especially, uh, don't like to be transplanted. So if you're going to do that, there are a couple of options. Soil block is the best. Soil blocks are amazing. They're made out of metal. They last forever. There's really no um, plastic involved. And you can make soil blocks so they cut the soil and when you transplant them, you're absolutely not disturbing the roots or very minimally. You can also achieve that with pods, um, which are essentially the same thing, but there's a little bit more um, input that goes into them. Dirt pods where you can get them wet, they expand, you can plant your seed in there, and then you can take them out to the field when the time is right and the roots aren't disturbed. Otherwise, and it's totally okay to do this, direct seed them when the um, danger of frost has passed, a danger of consecutive frost has passed. Um, that's going to be the best thing. A plant takes about a week, maybe longer, I don't know, to endure the trauma of being transplanted. That's all I'm going to share for now. Thanks for tuning in. I'm going to try to uh, be really aware of uh, common questions that I see online and at work and with my community and try to respond to those questions as this season uh, unfolds and continues. So please feel free to ask me questions and to share them to the public so that we can continue to learn from each other and um, start to grow our own food and share our own food and share our own resources and uh, that that process can work on us, which is a really awesome um, feeling to, to grow our own food and to have that knowledge and that skill. So thanks for tuning in again and happy gardening. Gone to the effort of taking in. Oh, man. No. Myself, I was trying to make a video. I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> It's awesome. I'm just here for a cookie. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah,